Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to show you how to create and price a project estimate with Intramural Quest. All right, so the first step is simply to click on new project in the top right corner. And here we can then define our project, give it a name, and we can also set certain more advanced settings like the currency or the location. But most importantly, we can add a data source. Now, the reason that we want to add a data source is that we want to be able to reuse data either from a previous project or from a master costing library. And in order to do so, we add the project that we want to pull information from as a data source project. Now, in this example, I'm just going to use the example project that exists within the trial workspace just to show you how we can pull information from a data source project. All right, so next step is simply to click on create project and that will create our project for us. Then going into the project, we are going to start at estimation and then at the bid level. Right now you'll see when you click on bid in a new project, it will automatically prompt you on whether you want to import a bid. No, normally this is what you would want to do, but for this example, I'm just going to say no for the moment and show you how we can create a bid entirely from scratch. Right, so now what we need to define is we have to define the line items that we actually want to exist within this project and that we want to price. And now in order to do so, we can add items to the project estimate by clicking on plus item at the bottom here. All right, so we can then simply say next and that will create a line item for us and also immediately open up its editor. Now you'll see here in the explorer that we have the line item and then we also have a pricing sheet for that line item. And the pricing sheet is where we're going to do the cost calculations. But before doing that, let's first define this line item. So I'm going to click on the line item here. I'm going to open my action tab on the right hand side and click on line item info. Now here I can define it and for this example I'm just going to call this excavation and then let's give it an item number of one and we'll give it a unit of cubic yard and a quantity of a hundred. Right, so once we've defined the line item, we now have to define the pricing sheet. Now, typically you want a pricing sheet to be able to be attached to line items. So you want to give it a name that makes sense. So in this case, I'm just going to call this the same. So we're just going to call it excavation. It also has a unit of cubic yards to match the line item that we're pricing. And then the production unit and primary production is something that we'll define in a few moments. All right, but now firstly, what we need to do to price this item is we need to add the inputs which would be resources or clusters, which are teams of resources that are going to go into actually doing the excavation on site. All right, so to do that, we click on insert. Now you'll see that when you click on insert within a new project, it says no data to display. Now the reason for that is that there are no resources existing in this project at the moment. There are also no clusters existing in this project at the moment. All right. But that is where our data source comes in. Because we added a data source, we can click on the data source drop down menu at the top here. We can select that data source project. And immediately we can see we have access to all of the resources existing in that project, as well as all of the clusters existing in that project. Now, let's say I am going to need a backhoe for this excavation. So I'm gonna insert my backhoe cluster because I want to also include my diesel cost. All right, so I can simply double click on that and that will insert the cluster for me into the worksheet. Right, now let's also add a resource. So I'm gonna click on resources here, and I wanna add an operator to this. So let's search for an operator. And okay, it doesn't look like we have an operator within this project. Now, that's not a problem at all. We can always create and insert a new resource on the fly. So I simply go and I click on create an insert resource at the bottom here, and that then inserts a blank resource for me. Now we just have to define that resource. So to do that, I open up my pricing sheet in the line item explorer. We click on that resource and then we are able to define it here. Now, firstly, we're gonna give it a code. The code is just a short identifier and it is completely up to you how you want to define codes. But typically it makes sense to have some kind of standardization. So I'm gonna say this is a labor resource and let's say this is my seventh labor resource. Then let's just give it a name, it's an operator, and then a base budget rate, and let's say this is $30 per hour. So I'm just gonna define the unit here at the bottom as being hours. Right, so now we have that resource added and defined. So now I can go back to my pricing worksheet and we can see, right, we have our backhoe for per day and we've got our operator per day. However, we want to get to a cost per cubic yard. So we want to get to a unit rate. So now we have to transform our input rates into a specific unit rate. 
So firstly, let's get our operator to also to a day rate. So to do that, I'm going to say that we're going to be working nine hours per day. And, and to do this, I simply multiply by nine. But if I wanted to leave a comment to define what I mean, I can put a square bracket there, say hours per day. All right. So now we have both our backhoe and our operator at a day rate. Now we have to get to a cubic yard rate. Now this is where this primary production comes in. So this is a variable, a default variable that is always available within a worksheet within the platform. And what we want to do here is we want to define how fast can we work. Now firstly, we can select a time unit. So we can do it per hour. So we can say how many cubic yards can we do per hour. Or we can define it as a day. Now we can also define other production units. So we could have a production unit for a shift or a double shift, but for this example, we'll just leave it at a day. Now I can define the primary production and say that we can work at a speed of 200 cubic yards per day. So now we've defined this variable. And if we go and click on variables here, you'll see that our primary production has been defined as being, as, as having a value of 200. Now to apply that to our two inputs, we simply select the inputs. And we can say apply common transform and we can say write divide by curly bracket at p curly bracket now all that that means is the curly brackets just tells the system that it is a variable and in order to tell it which variable to use we use that identifier so the identifier for primary production is at p and we put that in between curly brackets so you'll see now We've divided it to a cubic yard cost. So now we know it's going to cost us $3.45 per cubic yard of this excavation. Now, if we want to reuse this in the future on another project, we can. And when we do, we can easily update our production rate or make any other changes if we used any other variables. All right, something else that we can do is we can add comments here. So we could say, for example, insert a comment. So we do that by going to this little menu here. And then we can say select insert comment. And here I can add any extra information that I wanted to that I wanted people to be able to see when viewing this pricing worksheet. Right, so that's how we price a worksheet from scratch. But now, typically, you will already have these existing within your costing library. So that means we don't usually have to create items or pricing worksheets from scratch because we've done that during the implementation phase. So typically when we start a project, what we would do is we would import our bid items. So here, if we click on import, we have a number of options. Firstly, we can import it from a workspace project. So again, if we have our typical line items or activities that we do existing inside of a master project, we can simply go to that project and select the specific items that we want in this bid. So let's say I want these items, we simply select them, say next, and we bring them across to this project. Now, once they've imported, you'll see that they actually bring across all of the pricing information that they had within that previous project. So they already have their pricing worksheets attached. We can click in there, we can see that we can make any edits that we want, say, for example, change production or change the rate of a specific resource. So let's say I wanted to change the cost of diesel, we could do that. And that's going to just change it here in this project, not in the project that we pulled from. The other thing that we typically would want to change after importing a bid item from a previous project is our quantities, because in this project, we're definitely going to do, say, a different quantity. So let's say 3000 cubic yards instead of 2600. So to do, change that, we simply switch on table edit at the bottom here, and then we are able to edit the numbers in table. So we can go and update those quantities. Lastly, another option that we have is when we receive a unit rate bid from the client, or we've set up a bid in quantity takeoff software, and we want to import that from a file. So for that, under import, we also have the option to click on plus import. And now instead of saying import from a project, we can import from file. So we can click on, let's say, Excel file, and we can say upload. And we simply select our bid and open that. And now all that we need to do is to label for the system what column in our Excel sheet is what contains what information. So I'm going to say this is my item number. This is my description. This is my bid quantity. And this is my unit. One thing just to note, when preparing a bid for import, just delete any unnecessary headings so that you don't have any text within a column that contains numbers, etc. Right, but now we can simply say next 
and next, and then that is going to import our bid for us. Now, in this case, we don't yet have prices. So we've imported our line items with the quantities and the units and descriptions, any other comments that was in that bid document. So we've got all of that information inside, but now we need to price them. So in order to do so, we can simply go into an item. And now again, we have the option of inserting information from a data source. So when we go into the item, we can say insert. Now we wanna just make sure that we have our data source selected and then we can simply search for the pricing sheet for this specific item. So I can go and say, right, this is the pricing worksheet that I'm looking for. And we can double click on that in order to insert it. And that will then pull across that pricing worksheet for us. And there we go. We can see right here we have our pricing worksheet with our calculations pre-specified, etc. Right, so we can do this manually, right? So we can add the existing pricing worksheets or we can also do this in a little bit more of an automated fashion. So if we've got a data source project, we also have the option to say auto price. So given auto price, I can select the criteria on which I want to match. So do I want to match an item number or description, etc.? And then I can simply tell the system to run through my data source project and match up the pricing worksheets that exists within that project with the line items inside of my current project. So once that's done, we can see that now we've added all of the pricing worksheets to the items inside of this bid. Now, of course, we can go through them, we can open them up, we can make any edits, we can insert new resources, change prices, etc. But the idea is that we want to be able to very easily use the information contained inside of our costing library project and add it to our current project estimate. Right, so that's how we will create the project estimate itself, so get to our cost to company. But then the next thing just to complete this project estimate is to add markup. Now we've got various different ways of adding markup, but typically we're going to use the markup tab here in the action tab. And here you've got various options. You can mark up by a percentage. You can mark up to a specific amount if you want to sell the bid for a specific amount. You can spread indirect costs across items. You can apply mock up to different groups of line items or to different groups of inputs. But I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. There is a more in-depth video on markup available on the community page. But just for the moment, I'm just going to put a 20% global markup on here just to get us to a selling rate. Right, so here you can see we have our selling rates added. So this is our cost to company, and this is what we will be selling this bid for. So that's how we create a project estimate in Drummond Quest. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we can update our input costs for specific projects. So when we are going to be negotiating material prices with suppliers, how we can get those quotes into the system and apply them to the estimate, as well as how to apply subcontractor prices to the estimate. But that's all for today. Thank you very much.